Hello, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from Allery Chemistry and welcome to this video on OCRB Salters, Energy and Matter. Now this video is dedicated to the oceans topic, so that's O, um, so everything in here is, is actually tailored to OCRB Salters, so it's not like other resources that you may find online where they're quite generic and you're wondering if they actually meet the specification um, for your examples. Well, this video actually does and it's been designed around the um, you know the specification points set by OCR, um, and in fact, there's actually a full range of videos um, for OCRB salters in year one and year two that cover all the um, the topics, including like this one is, is oceans, so it includes all the topics for OCRB salters. I've also done some generic whiteboard tutorials as well, which go through specific points in chemistry um, that are available on there. So there's a full range of um, a full range of stuff if you if you study OCRB Salters. It's all for free. All I ask is you hit the subscribe button. That'll be absolutely fantastic. Um, and as long as people keep subscribing and keep watching and keep sharing, then I will keep making these and updating them when new specifications come out. So um, please do. Please hit the subscribe button. That'll be absolutely brilliant. If you would like your own copy of these, I've got the full range of year one to year two available because these are just slides that I've created for revision purposes. Um, then if you just click on the description box um, below, you'll be able to purchase them there. The great value for money. Um, you can use them on your smartphone, your tablet. Um, I've known people to print them out as well and annotate all of them and put them in a file and use them as their, as their um, summary notes as well. So um, really good value for money. So just click on the description box and that would be... Um, and that would be brilliant. Uh, right, so like I say, this is dedicated to OCRB salters. This is a, a relatively short video. Um, it's mainly going to look at greenhouse effects and infrared, so it's just a short bit in the in the oceans topic. So we're going to be looking at the greenhouse effect. We're going to be looking at enhanced uh, greenhouse effect as well, um, and looking at um, infrared and how you know how global warming happens, etc. So we're going to be looking at that. So it's not it's quite a, a relatively short topic. Okay, so. Let's look at the greenhouse effect first, okay? So the greenhouse effect actually helps to keep the earth warm enough to sustain life. So it is good to have um, some level of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere because if we didn't, the earth would be a lot colder than where it is now. And we need it to be, it's probably just about right in terms of temperature-wise for, you know, for life to be sustained. But we know that, you know, you see it everywhere uh, currently about climate, uh, you know, the climate changing, uh, about carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere and the problems associated with having too much of these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and the effects it can have on our climate. And so, you know, it's a big thing at the moment, incredibly topical with governments and world leaders trying to come up with strategies to try and reduce our emissions, whether that's through taxation, whether that's through um, technology, and um, whether that's through social changes, you know, changing the way we, we live, we live our life. So there's various different things which are happening all around us now. So it's incredibly relevant, um, you know, to, to talk about these things. So the first thing is electromagnetic radiation from the sun reaches the Earth's atmosphere where most of the UV and infrared is absorbed by the gases in the atmosphere, thankfully, because a lot of the, um, or some, some elements of UV light is really dangerous to us. Um, I'm filming this today and it is red hot outside. It is nice and sunny. Now, if I was to go out there um, and go out there with no um, suntan lotion on I'm really going to burn because the it's the it's not the heat that's actually damaging the skin it's not infrared it's UV light that damages it and UV light um, damages the skin uh, the skin cells and you end up getting um, you end up getting burnt and you get blisters so yeah so most some some UV light obviously does come through the atmosphere okay so there we are so some of the radiation anyway so uv radiation infrared so some of this is reflected back into space from the clouds okay so some of it's just bounced straight back off okay however um some radiation does reach the surface of the earth and it's mainly visible light because obviously we could see around us um and uv uv lights coming through as well there is some infrared obviously because we can feel we can feel some of the heat from the sun um but mainly them too so some is reflected um, by light colored and shiny surfaces so that might be um, if you live in a big city and um, you've got these skyscrapers I know in the, the city where I live close to Newcastle um, so well, I live in Northumberland there's no skyscrapers in Northumberland but um, not where I live anyway but um, in, in Newcastle there is the building loads of big skyscrapers with glazed fronts and their reflective surfaces and what they do is these 
um, reflect some of the um, uh, some of the um, the radiation that's come uh, from the uh, from space and um, reflect it back out. And some of it is actually absorbed into the earth, which is like the ground, for example, so rocks and roads and pavements, etc. Okay, so infrared radiation is radiated back towards space. So some of this escapes through infrared, through an IR window, okay, infrared window. And this is just the frequencies that aren't absorbed by the gases in the atmosphere. Okay, so some of these will then escape and leave the Earth. Particularly happens um, during nighttime, so when the Earth cools, when, when the Earth is turned away, or wherever you live, of course, whenever it's um, turned away from the sun, then some of this heat tries to escape from the um, from the Earth um, and back out into the atmosphere. Now, some of the infrared frequencies are absorbed by gases in the troposphere, though, and they re-emit these, re these in all directions, including back down to Earth, and this is the greenhouse effect. So some of that um, cooling some of that release of heat from the earth is actually being trapped because of some of these gases in the troposphere and we need to identify where these gases have come from um, because if there's too much of that we get too much heat being retained and we end up having um, you know, bizarre changes in weather patterns for example we get icebergs melting for example which we've got habitats which live on these these in these areas which can be affected as well so we've got to really kind of look at right you know what's causing this can we as scientists and as people um and you know can we actually do something about this change the way we look at it and scientists have been observing this greenhouse effect for many many years now Okay, so let's have a look at the, the link between infrared and global warming. Um, so greenhouse gases in the atmosphere absorb infrared radiation. Okay, so greenhouse gases are anything really such as carbon dioxide. Water is a greenhouse gas as well. Um, and methane, now we know water is a greenhouse gas because you can see water condensing as clouds. So if we've got loads and loads of clouds, if you think about it in the winter, the most obvious one, if you think about it in the winter, um, if you've got a cloudy day in the winter, then it's not as cool as if it's really, if there's not a cloud in the sky in the winter, a crisp winter's day, then you notice it's really, really cold. You get a frost when there's no clouds around. So when you get clear skies, you're more likely to get a frost. And this is because the effect of the clouds act as a bit of a blanket. So they, they are a greenhouse gas. Methane is a greenhouse gas. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. So basically, we're looking for molecules which have two different atoms in there. As you can see, carbon dioxide, water, and methane. Okay, some of them are more potent than others, of course, um, but you know they're all greenhouse gases. So all of these gases they absorb infrared radiation, which makes the bonds in the molecules vibrate a lot more. So you imagine them: you've got water molecule, you've got oxygen in the middle, and two hydrogens, and the bonds vibrate backwards and forwards as if as though the molecules are dancing when they absorb some of this infrared radiation. Now this vibrational energy is then transferred to neighbouring particles because they're colliding with each other. So if they're moving around with a lot more energy, I know you can't see us, but I'm waving my hands around. Um, when, they're, when they're moving around with a lot more energy, what they do is they collide with other particles, and these now have more kinetic energy as a result. Uh, and then um, the temperature starts to rise. Okay. Um, another analogy, well, it's not an analogy, but it's exactly how microwaves work as well. We're using a different type of radiation, of course, but microwaves work by sending in microwaves, and vibrating the water molecules in the food vibrate a lot more and they knock into neighboring uh, water molecules and then they knock into ones and it's this chain effect and eventually what happens is your food then starts to warm up the whole you know across the whole amount of food you're not getting certain bits of it warming up the whole amount is warming up so the which gas has the biggest effect depends on two main factors like i say there's some which are more potent than others okay so how much of that gas how much of that particular gas there is in the atmosphere has an impact and how much radiation one molecule of that gas absorbs so some some of these gases are more potent than others like i say okay so the enhanced greenhouse effect is the cause of global warming, mainly caused by anthropogenic activities. So all that means, so it sounds like a fancy word, but all that means is human activities. So what are we doing as humans to exacerbate or, well, yeah, to exacerbate or make worse the greenhouse effect? We need a greenhouse effect to keep us alive, but are we as humans making this worse? Okay, are we putting um, 
pollutants in there to make it worse. So we know that because actually over the years the world has become increasingly industrialized. We've noticed that especially since the 1900s. You know, we've had um, you know, the Industrial Revolution. I'm, I'm talking about obviously within the UK. It might happen at different points globally. But the Industrial Revolution, um, and then we've become increasingly more industrialized. And now we're getting to a point where you know a lot of things are manufactured, technology's improved. And now actually we're entering into an era where we're trying to well, not entering, we've been doing it for a short while, where we've actually become more aware of pollution and where you know governments across the world are putting measures in place to try and reduce pollution pollutants. I know in the UK, for example, um, we're trying to phase out the use of petrol and diesel cars and using electric cars instead, and um, trying to come up with greener ways to generate electricity, so phasing out coal-powered um, fire power stations, um, encouraging people to insulate their homes properly. You have, you know, when you buy a new house, you've got to make sure they've got double glazing and insulation you know and trying to trying to in every aspect of our life recycling for example trying to reduce the greenhouse effect that we that we have on on the planet so we have been burning fossil fuels though and it's an ever increasing demand for energy where you know we still have coal-fired power stations gas-fired power stations in the uk um, and there is a high demand for electricity and power so uh, this in itself produces a large amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere okay and we know that carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas um, another aspect as well is that trees use up carbon dioxide so some governments are saying well we'll plant more trees we'll set up woodland and and plant these um because these absorb carbon dioxide and we're trying to strike that balance between carbon dioxide emitted into the atmosphere and some actually being withdrawn or taken in however um you know we have been felling trees trees are being felled not not just in the uk but globally you know to provide paper to provide wood building materials etc you know so if we're felling trees or felling it for um other uses of the land so it might be for farmland for example you can chop down trees for that so you know it's it's really um, it's really difficult to control carbon dioxide levels if trees are being cut down and they're being removed. So one of the ideas that some governments do is say, well, we'll plant more trees or if a housing estate is being built, there's a criteria to try and make it a bit more environmentally friendly by planting trees or preserving trees within a development because they play a massive role um, within the control of the greenhouse effect. Okay, so still on the enhanced greenhouse effect, um, it can be caused, like you say, by anthropogenic human activities, but um, it can also be it's, it can also be really easy to think and say right well as a direct consequence of our actions so in other words we're burning fossil fuels and and chopping down trees etc that seems like the obvious one but another part of it is farming um, and and farming actually does contribute to the greenhouse effect so for example the increased demand of food um, as the global population rises, the you know the population is really expanding quite quickly. There's a rise in the demand for food, and food, for example, um, meat products. So, for example, if it's beef from cows, and it's a nice cow there licking his own nose, um, then um, you know the the demand for meat in general, cows burp and 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 <laughs> flatulence. Okay, so they release gases from both ends, um, and because they release these gases, they're actually quite potent gases of methane that's being produced methane rises up into the atmosphere so you know trying to come up with new ways of farming maybe it's changing the feed for the cows or maybe it's changing the way you know some people will change the way they eat they'll become vegetarian so there's a lower demand on 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 cows for example so they don't have this effect on on greenhouse but clearly you know the eating habits is very complex you know what people eat are for various different reasons different ethical reasons and beliefs so you know but but we know from this hard science the hard science point of view like this we know that cows produce methane and this can cause a problem with um with the greenhouse effect so farmers are looking at ways in which we could try and reduce this or modernize um you know the agricultural industry because it's a big industry now all these examples these release greenhouse gases which means less infrared can escape from the atmosphere so the heat is effectively trapped in the earth and this this leads to climate change and so global warming um, which is obviously the uncontrolled effect or the, the, the imbalance in these um, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere leads to rising sea levels, climate change, and obviously this can lead to coastal flooding, more extreme weather patterns, as I've said as well. Uh, you know, the, the rising sea levels is, is caused by the melting of the uh, of polar ice caps, which effectively rise, you know, um, they increase the, the, the amount of water or liquid in there. Um, and obviously we get 
we get more severe weather patterns as a consequence as well. And, and scientists are looking at um, global weather patterns and are, is that directly linked with global warming, um, you know, and, and trying to prove it and demonstrate it. And I think generally it's accepted that, yes, yes, it is. You know, most scientists, some scientists don't. This is the beauty of science. There's, there's a debate within science. But, you know, globally, most scientists believe that, yes, this is causing global warming um, and therefore... You know, the next step is we need governments and world leaders to try and do something to to reduce the effect of the greenhouse effect. So so you'd see there's a lot of it's a it's quite an interesting topic. It's a nice little bit that we've put in within the Salters topic and it's incredibly topical. Um, you know, but you need to know it from a chemistry point of view and the physics point of view. Um, you know, that's what you need to know and the effects of it for the exam. Okay, so that's it. So I told you it was a short one. Um, so that has um, that's everything you need to know about the uh, greenhouse effect for the oceans topic. So the O topic for OCRB salters. Like I say, there's a full range of videos for year one and year two for salters, specifically designed to like the black screens like this. These are the revision videos. I've also done some gen general whiteboard tutorial videos as well. Go and have a look on Allery Chemistry YouTube channel. Please subscribe. It's all for free. Um, you know, and as long as you keep subscribing, then I will keep making them and keep updating them as well as new specifications come out and um, also you can purchase these remember click on the link in the description box and you'll be able to get a hold of them there okay that's it bye bye